Hey guys, welcome back to the Gazelle Lab. This is Anthony. Today I have for you another phone review. Today we're taking a look at the Sony Xperia TX. Now this was released at the end of October, right before, or right when uh, the new James Bond Skyfall came out. And this is one of the, the official James Bond phones. There's also the Xperia uh, Xperia TL, which is on AT&T and has LTE. It's a little bit different layout. It comes in one color. Uh, and then there's a, the Xperia T, which is the, the real Bond phone that he uses in the movie. And that's mainly for uh, European markets. Uh, the TX is a little bit different. It's for not only European markets, but also Asian markets. Uh, no LTE on board on this thing or the T, but what you do get is you do get a removable back, unlike the T. Uh, and the buttons are, some of the configurations are a little bit different. And the design's a little bit different too. You get a little bit more of a curve that you found in the old, uh, you know, remember the old Xperia Arc. So, which is very nice. One of the, I think this is one of the best looking phones out there. I think now every phone looks like a little, you know, like a plain black slab. And this thing is very sexy, very slim. It brings some nice style, uh, much needed style over to, over to, not only the phone market in general, but definitely over to Android, which is nice. Uh, if you're wondering what what clock that is, that's HD widgets, because I know everyone's going to ask. Uh, so let's get into the, the device right now. It's in terms of uh, you know general network, you have 850, 900, 1800, 1900 uh, GSM bands. With 3G, you have HSDPA, 850, 900, 1700, which is great for all you T-Mobile users like myself. That's why I'm running this thing right now. 1900 and 2100 uses a, a micro micro SIM card slot as well. Uh, in terms of dimensions, you have 131 uh, by about 60, 68.6, almost 69 millimeters, and only 8.6 millimeters thin, very thin, slim, and sexy. Uh, 127 grams, you know, almost four and, four and a half ounces. Uh, feels, you know, a little plastic. Not not the build quality you get in HTC. They're probably comparable to that of uh, to that of Samsung, uh, but it does look a, a lot nicer than let's say a GS3 or a GS2. Uh, TFT capacitive touchscreen, 60 million colors, 720 by 1280, 4.5 4.55 inches. Uh, beautiful display. I'm not gonna lie. 323 PPI, which is nice. Very clear. Uh, the display is one of the nicest things on this thing. Really nice display. Uh, so this is the Timescape UI, which Honestly, I'm not really a fan of. When I first got the device, it was a little bit laggy. I ran the update that they just released for it about a few weeks ago. It is a little bit better, but honestly, when I use the device, I do use Nova Launcher, so I use a launcher on top of it. If you don't know what that is, you can just go ahead and Google it. But right now, I'm going to do the review with Timescape UI. Uh, you know, you just get that app button in the middle. Really not my cup of tea. I'm so used to using either, you know, Sense or uh, TouchWiz or just pure vanilla really don't like that button there. You get the capacitive buttons which are on the screen which is nice. No hardware buttons on here. So you have home, back. Uh, this brings up you know recent apps and stuff. Uh, so uh, after this is a shatterproof and uh, scratch resistant glass which is really nice. Like I said Timescape UI powered by the Sony uh, Mobile Bravi engine. Uh, three point, let's get into the rest of the hardware. 3.5 millimeter jack uh, on the top, on the bottom. Nothing, just a microphone. The sides, uh, volume rocker, uh, uh, micro micro USB port, which is weird on this side. You don't really see on this side. And dedicated camera key, which is cool. You really don't see this that often anymore as well, which I really like. Uh, on the back, you have that nice 13 megapixel camera, light flash, a uh, little Xperia logo, and the speaker grill right there. Uh, top, I said 3.5 jack, standard. Uh, and on this side, the power button. Really nice design, feels really good in the hand, really solid. Not too big, you know, a little bit smaller than uh, a GS3, but still feels really nice in the hand, easy to go in the pocket. Okay, so let's talk uh, memory. 16 gigs internal, one gigabyte of RAM, micro SD up to 32 gig, I got an eight gig in here. Uh, like I said, you do have eight HSDPA 42 megabytes per second, great for T-Mobile users. In terms of connectivity, you have uh, Wi-Fi, ABGN, dual band, Wi-Fi direct, DLNA, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, NFC. Sony sells these NFC tags, which is really cool. I don't have any yet, but it just makes, if you want to go in your car or you want different settings when you walk into your house, you can buy all these tags, touch the phone to the tag, 
and your phone will go into that into that setting, which is cool. Uh, in terms of uh, OS, I'll show you that right now. I'll just show you that in the settings, which is easier. It is running Android 4.04 .04, uh, ice cream sandwich. Sony's you know famous for taking forever to update their devices, so I can show you that right there. Uh, I did, like I said, it did run an update when I first got it. Just a, a newer build, no uh, no Jelly Bean yet. Uh, they say it's planned, but who really knows? Uh, but it is still not that bad. Uh, in terms of processing power, dual core 1.5 Crate, Adreno 225, Qualcomm MSM 8268 Snapdragon. It's pretty much what you're seeing on any uh, top end dual core phone, or like the 1S and the, the domestic GS3. The international is using a, a 1.4 uh, quad core. So this is pretty much the standard of the, the best end uh, dual core chip, the 1.5 Crate. Uh, you do get stereo FM radio, which is nice once you plug in the headset, uh, GPS, Google Maps, whole mess of all, you know, all these Google applications, anything you want. You can customize the layout. Uh, a lot of different wallpapers, moving wallpapers. Sony included also a lot of their own apps, which I really haven't got into, but some of them uh, do look pretty cool, like they have uh, Xperia football downloads. Uh, if you want to watch, it's pretty all soccer stuff. Uh, then other stuff they have. They have a great music player here, the Walkman Classic. Uh, I don't have any music on it, but this is a really good player. One of the best players on uh, the Android, on a stock Android phone. Uh, track ID. Uh, you do get Smart Connect. A lot of things. If you, you know, they have that Smart Watch uh, using NFC. A lot of cool different things. So uh, I give my credit to Sony since they've left Sony Ericsson. The, the, the quality of the handsets have been coming more premium. And not only they're really developing uh, some great some great software as well so uh, last but not least let's get into this camera so it's a 13 megapixel camera I will show you some shots on it so what's great like I said it has the, the dedicated button which is cool so you could hold that down there's bright light in here so it might look a little distorted but overall it produces some uh, good quality shots uh, definitely on par, if not better, than uh, the GS3 camera. Uh, but, you know, just because it's 13 megapixels, still really good camera. Autofocus, LED flash, geotagging. Uh, you know, you're just going to see higher megapixel than, let's say, an iPhone 5 or a, a GS3. But I think the quality is pretty much on par. Maybe a tad bit better once you get these things on the computer. Uh, overall, I think it's a great device. It's, I'm not going to compare it to the TL because that's on AT&T and it's a little bit different. This is uh, a much different device. If you're on T-Mobile, I think it's a great buy. The only thing is, it's not on contract, so you're going to have to fork over. This is, I think I paid $550 right now, probably $520 over at Negri Electronics, a great Rapido dealer out of uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so there you have it. This is my review of the Sony Xperia TX, the James Bond phone.